Who has better taste, me or Louis? Um, you've got. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, my name is Emma, comparative literature graduate, currently at film school, and I, I like reading, so I decided I would do just a video on that. I'm still on a book channel, but I thought it would be an interesting video for me to make, um, given my history and my education and whatnot, um, just to talk about like why. Like, what is the point of actually studying literature? Like, why it is when I actually like reading? Like, what I actually feel like I get out of it? And like, because would you believe there are people who don't read? I, th this for me is just kind of continues to be beyond me. Um, but I've been having like discussions with my mother about like what I will and won't read and like why we will and won't read things. This is, I guess, in two parts, what the value of studying literature is but then also why I choose to read, why I choose to read, and why I like, want to get out of a book. And my first question is, where was your hot drink? Like, I know you've got one, but why haven't they got one? Go on, I'll, I'll wait, go get yourself a cup of tea or coffee, or just for God's sake, go drink a glass of water. I know you haven't done it. Like, I know you haven't done it. Um, I'll wait. Um, and you could get yourself a hot beverage because this is obviously gonna be a long video. It's my channel, why does it not? <laughs> Oh wait. That's still, that's still hot though. I'm drinking green tea, uh, lemon green tea. When I was at school in my desk, you could open my desk and I would have like five or six different kinds of green tea. I occasionally would intercept a note or two being like, thank you for like letting me borrow tea. So. Let's start with the concept of studying literature. I haven't planned this video, so this is gonna be fun for editing, Emma. I already apologize in advance. I took English for A-levels. Well, at my school, it was actually English pre-U, which is like pre-university. Then I did a comparative literature degree, as many, many of you know. I have a video on it right there. And now I'm doing a graduate degree, which is film school, so that's my MA, um, which isn't literary. It's not literary, but it's still story. It's like same, same, but different. And many people know. I annotate absolutely everything. You can't see that. Yes, you can. So not much has changed in terms of like, just because I'm no longer formally doing it doesn't mean that I've stopped studying it, you know? The two classic questions I get on any of those videos about like, why studied? The questions are why? And then also, what am I going to do with it afterwards? So again, I'm currently at film school, so that is what I'm going to do with it afterwards. But the question is why, and that's just like, I always thought it was because I wasn't very good at anything else. For my A-levels, I took English, Biology and French. I took them because I enjoyed them, but that's kind of a rogue combination. Um, as much as I love Biology, I really should have taken like German or something, which is another language that would have been smart, but here we are. So I don't know, I always kind of took it because I thought I was bad at everything else, but I wasn't quite good at it. And I just think it flatters like the world view that I have, particularly in the choice of like me taking comparative literature. I had a comment the other day being like, what is really the difference between English Lit and Comp Lit? Okay, first of all, with English Lit, you only study things written in English. Um, in comparative literature, that is not a prerequisite. And that is also just an idea that I always subscribe to. Like, can you imagine almost pretending that the rest of the world doesn't exist? Like, how can you study the romantics? And I've said this before, how can you study the romantics in like English lit and then you don't study Foscolo and you don't study them when they're in Italy and the fact that they interact and live that culture and then like you think that's not going to influence what they're writing about, what they're reading, is if people don't translate things. I don't know, I think I like studying literature because of the way that it tells you so much about the world over time. And like I've never done history. And Ophelia, I'm really sorry, but I hate I hate studying history. And I have always absolutely despised it. And I can't stand it. I just can't stand it. If I have to read history books, you know that the only ones I've managed to read are Nancy Mitford's because it's so boring. It's so boring. I find it so like to the point of tears do I find it boring. 
Um, I didn't even take history as a GCSE. Like I just, nope, I, I don't understand how people enjoy it. So then for me, I always kind of have had my history via reading the books that I do. Like I'll read something, be like, oh, I don't understand this and then do a quick Google rather than reading like a big chunky book on the subject. For example, I've got this, it's currently on a stack of books and a couple of them are history books. One of them is A Belgium and the Congo, 1885 to 1980. My brother likes that kind of stuff. I just don't, like, it just does not vibe with like who I am and the way that I consume just <laughs> knowledge. Why would I read a book on the plague that they had in London in 1665 when I could read I said book. When I, why would I read a history book on it when I could read this, which is a fictional account um, of an eyewitness? Um, it's Daniel Defoe. We love Daniel Defoe on this channel, if you're new. I just think you can learn a lot about people and a time and a place by the literature written about it, by the stories of a fiction. Like, I just think that makes so much more sense in terms of understanding it, mainly because you understand it more through people's feelings and their emotions rather than just a sterile historical, like, take. Because as well, a lot of history pretends it's not biased, but what I've learned from Ophelia is that it is all really biased. If you're super new, watch my friend Ophelia's channel. She does languages and history and I love her to absolute pieces. Um, but yeah, people still have biases when they're writing history books, but they kind of like, what, can pretend they don't? Because they're like, this is facts. I'm like, is it though? Is it though? So I guess there's a nice acknowledgement in fiction that like, it is someone's opinion and like you know that you can take it with a grain of salt my mum always says but like there's probably more fiction written in like biographies than there is in loads of the fiction that we read especially the biographies of politicians let's be real i'm just not into that whole like great man like genre Ugh. so yeah i think i way preferred when i started studying complet because it complemented my worldview where i find that english is very like linear complet is very much like it's about the macro and it's about seeing connections and relationships and trends and if you guys have ever done any like Moretti I think his name is you literally don't even read the books sometimes one of the things they were doing was like just scanning the documents to have like key phrases to then see how these phrases and like things pattern over time and like geography it's really interesting in terms of just a way of like studying literature as a bigger body rather than like studying the individual like passages. This is another thing with like complete. Like I never had to do any like microanalysis because I fucking hate it. Like I just, I don't derive any value from sitting down and analyzing how a paragraph does something or makes you feel something. My mum does, my mum enjoys it. If you're new, my mother is an academic. These are her books, not mine. But that just doesn't flip my bow and it never has. I kind of, I don't know, it's more like feeling like what's the point? Like, I know what it makes me like feel, but like, why would I like sit down and explain it? Like, I've really never, in many of my essays, I've really never gone in like, into like fine detail. Um, Cause I just don't think it's useful, at least not for the way that I see the world and like, what I want to get from the literature, especially if I'm studying it and especially in a formal capacity. That's also just not what I annotate for. Hello, again, if you're new, I absolutely shred all of my books to pieces in like, a fun way. Be a complex is so much about like seeing trends and patterns and especially ideas and the way that they like move around and work and like you can see how influential a text is just by how many times it gets re-editioned and like in how many languages it gets translated and stuff like is it means because people want to read it. People want to know and I think it was super naive to like pretend that that doesn't happen um, which I think when I study things like English Lit it didn't acknowledge that and also is very indicative of the fact that Often the English can have a very insular view and pretend they don't need the rest of Europe or the world. Cries in Brexit. I realised what I actually meant by this is that I really enjoyed how comparative literature acknowledged like the life of a text in terms of its physicality, like it is a book, it's a physical object, it has a life that is outside the confines of the four walls of the written text. Like. But I just found it so exciting to acknowledge how these things like move and like the influence you can measure in terms of translations and re-editions and just how that physical object influences people's lives and stuff like that is fascinating. Um, that's also why you've got marbled paper like that's in so many editions that you get in the 18th century like it influences hugely the way that you read just because of how the physical object exists. That's what I really didn't like I think with English Lit when I studied it was just it felt like it everything existed in a vacuum 
but that's just not the way texts work. They're cultural objects too. When you study in a formal capacity, like, you know, your degree, your education, they're not really teaching you necessarily about like the individual movements or whatever, or individual like texts. It's much more about the skills that they're teaching you. It took me a while to clock onto that. Like Complet isn't necessarily teaching you about all of these like different areas that you can have a look at. It's more the, it's teaching you how you see things together and like all of those skills. And now it's ended up complementing my filmmaking degree really well. Would you believe it? From a standpoint of like, not doing it all, but kind of doing it all and like seeing how everything fits together. And so it's just been so useful when I'm doing film and you can like apply it in the most practical sense ever. You're so in a mindset of being able to step back and just look and observe and you're not going into like this tiny little details. You're seeing how things like all fit together. Conversely though, it has meant that I'm not very good at like zeroing in on like little things. The interesting thing is that like having now finished my degree, I, got this massive freedom to be able to read whatever I wanted and that's just been like mind-blowing because it's just helped me like almost reinforce what my love of reading actually is and like where like what it, what it like what it's for almost like what do I actually want to get out of the things that I read and I think I've been able to like not re-establish but just reinforce that having read like such a wider range of things that I wouldn't have read before so far as I'm filming this this year I've read I read Normal People, I read The Secret History, I read The Alchemist, I started reading Gender Trouble, and I've started reading Journal of a Plague Year, and I read In Watermelon Sugar. Like, that is just such a range that, like, I'm not used to, and I think last year was like that as well. I just figured out a little bit more about what it is I expect from what I read. I love philosophy. I love reading philosophy. I love it so much because I like reading when it gives me new ideas. I like when I'm presented with like new ways of seeing the world and new ways of like, new ways to think about how you interact with the world and new ways of just figuring out who you are and how what your place is in the world because that's what people have been doing their entire, the entire fucking time. And then people have written about it. It's just interesting to have a chance to challenge the way that you think. And that is something that I massively enjoy. I think you guys probably know how much I love Descartes fucking love Descartes. The idea of radical doubt is just, it's pure fucking like genius. Like it is pure fucking excellence. There is something about that that you just can't shake. I know that you can get it through like maybe watching a video on it, but to like sit down and like actually read like his thought process, I'm like, ugh, yes. Not to say that you can't necessarily derive value from reading something like normal people, but I've just shifted, I guess, what it means to me and like what I want to get from it. Because many of you guys know I'm dyslexic, so like I have to like think very hard about what I'm gonna spend my time and my energy on and my last few remaining brain cells um, to try and tackle because I need it to be worth it. Like value is then a very big thing for me. You going on a run? Yeah. Oh my God, where you going? Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> Don't touch me. With the freedom that I've had to like read whatever the fuck I want, it's just helped me like reestablish what it is that I actually want to read and what I want to get from it. I basically don't want to stop that learning process. Like, okay, I am obviously in formalized education because I am still doing a degree, but it's not like I sit down, I study something, I write an essay on it and I get marks back. That's not, that's just not what it is. It feels much more like I'm, I've started my career rather than like I'm finishing my education. Like that's, like the midpoint that I feel at, which is super nice to be honest, but it's so wildly different. But I think it's cemented for me that the fact is I can keep on learning and doing like, expanding my mind and whatnot by reading whatever the fuck I want. And like, this is gonna be an ongoing process for the rest of my life. Like I don't think I ever wanna stop. Could you imagine if you were the kind of person who wants to stop learning new things? How, how, does, your, how does your brain not just rot? I know that you can obviously learn things on the job, quite literally, but I don't know, I guess I don't want to let go of a lot of that, like, those analytical things that I've learned because they're so useful in other parts of my life. And I feel like I can say with confidence, but you guys clearly are the same because otherwise you wouldn't be watching this. You wouldn't even watch my channel to begin with. But yeah, it's just so much about, like, continuing to work on who you are and, like, the way that you think. And, like, I said it before, it's so important to have your views challenged. It's so important to have your belief systems challenged and just, like, to an extent who you are as a person challenged. And yeah, books can do that. Fiction can do that. Philosophy can do that. That's fucking wild. And the thing is as well, 
you can educate yourself and challenge yourself in ways that don't involve other people like you can do it in a, like an insular way that's almost like protected and you can put it down at any point when you're done with it and it's just a bit more like measured and you can take things at your own pace and again being dyslexic sometimes I just need longer and then weirdly enough yeah it is books that facilitate that because I can take it at whatever pace that I want to you almost give yourself the space to be getting things wrong because no one is gonna like be like ha ah! you just feel like eh and just let me read the thing please educate myself and especially because it is something more like political social like if someone's made a book on it they've done that like emotional labor for you so now like you just have to read it books just are so important and I will obviously vouch for the same for films but film is a little bit different in terms of often there is just so much more money involved and there are so many more people involved and it's not always as simple as it can be with books because you could write one and like e-publish it if you wanted to filmmaking just isn't the same and it does I, I just suck saying that so sometimes some of the movies that get made that have like that moral conscience and stuff like you really do need to appreciate them because sometimes you're not aware of how hard some people have fought for that film to just even exist for that script to even be like acknowledged and stuff sometimes books can take risks that films can't it's just a medium thing isn't it yeah it's a safe and interesting way of exploring your ideas ma'am Mama. Why do you study literature? <laughs> the look she just gave me. Oh, that's a really difficult question. The best definition I've ever heard was reading a book is like having a peek into inside someone else's head. Right? And so you can vicariously live experiences that you yourself would not live and therefore you can you can learn so I always want to learn if it's pure entertainment yeah I feel I, like... then I don't like it then I am wasting my time but I I want to learn and learning that can be factual but that can also be on a, on a humane scale where you just you know get empathy yeah empathy is the word right yeah is this how you just fight your crime novels yeah because I only I don't like especially like a whodunit I look at crime novels because they teach us something about contemporary society about what's going wrong with certain aspects of contemporary. Does this mean I have to stop calling them trash now? They're not, they're not all of them are trash. Are some of them trash? Not all of them are trash. Can some, we at least agree that Louis was trash? Are, some are trash and, and sometimes I thought oh, I wasted my time. Can we agree that Louis science fiction is trash? Yes. <laughs> That's all I wanted you to say. That's all I wanted you to say. Oh, is that is that? Who is who is who is who is better taste, me or Louis? Um, I said, you've got. <laughs> Why does? <laughs> no 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 no. You may leave now. No 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 no. You may leave now. No 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 no. You may leave now. You are dismissed. Thank you very much for your contribution to this no, video. No no no. You don't have to cut this out. But I think he um he 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 likes his travel literature, and that's good. Does, does Louis read travel literature? Yeah, loads of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. I love you. I hope so. What do you mean by that? Okay. Thank you, Mama. I'm the bearer of good news. Die. Literally, it's not. You can't. Moments of peace in this household. Oh, I can only describe as absolute luxuries. Everyone's left now. Brother's gone on a run. Mum's gone on a walk. Fucking finally now. Can finish. I think books should teach you something. I do agree with my mum. I mean, I would. I am very much my mother's daughter. It's so much about like learning about other people's experiences that you, she's right, but you don't have access to. And I think reading for entertainment is one thing. It's fine and it is what it is. Sometimes you don't want to have to pay attention to the world and sometimes you just want to escape from the reality that you find yourself in, in a one that suits you better for that time and maybe is just gentler on you mentally and emotionally. Absolutely, it's so valid. It's just not particularly why, it's not like my 
reason necessarily for picking something up. My enjoyment level isn't even necessarily a factor, which sounds d weird to say, but sometimes I want something that is gonna be like, <laughs> you know, something that's gonna be like mentally melt you or just fuck you up emotionally and mentally for a while. Um, sometimes I like to read to feel something. It is so important to understand other people's experiences, especially over time and especially over space. I love space. For example, my God, I literally cannot go over this. This is why I've dragged this copy in here. So this is Daniel Defoe's Journal of Plague Year. It purports to be an eyewitness account of the plague of 1665. There are two bits so far that have struck me quite quite a lot. As I film this, we're still in lockdown. He starts it off very much about talking about just the statistics. He just starts talking about the stats. It's called their like weekly bill where they get a list of all the parishes in London and who has died and what the causes were. He starts talking about that. And I was reading it like, oh damn, he's kind of obsessed with the numbers. This is sort of boring. As if I don't have an entire desktop on my laptop, which is just a tab thing full of coronavirus related tabs. I've got the BBC One open, which is like the tally of all the amount of people they've had vaccinated, the deaths, the new cases. I have the gov dot site for like my area in London to see how well that's doing. All of the coronavirus rules that we have at the moment, that's a page I have open. So like their fixation on the stats, I was like, this is a lot. And I was like, oh shit, I'm doing exactly the exact same fucking thing. That was like, ah oh, no. But then the bit that genuinely made me lose my fucking shit, that has genuinely made me lose my absolute shit, was a bit where he's discussing how with all the like panic of the plague, there happens to be a surge in the amount of people in London claiming to tell fortunes, in the amount of people in London who claim to be astrologers, in the amount of people in London who are claiming to practice some kind of witchcraft or magic as if my fucking for you page isn't full of tarot readings, witchcraft, and fucking astrology memes. There is like, there is a bit where he literally writes, and this is this is the bit that I showed you before because I did genuinely lose my shit reading it. <laughs> they always talk to them of such and such influences of the stars and the conjunctions of such and such planets. As if at the time of filming we haven't just got out of Mercury retrograde. Um. <laughs> This trade grew so open and generally practiced, but it became common to have signs and inscriptions set up at doors. Here lives a fortune teller. Here lives an astrologer. Here you may have your nativity calculated. That's literally, show me what your birth chart is. Yeah, so, yeah, so. Any, I think any kind of divinity and stuff like this is just like a classic coping mechanism for something that is so, big and scary and out of your control um, as a pandemic or what your kind of plague is. So to read something and to be able to identify with it. This text is 300 years old. Why am I sat there going, oh shit, why is this me? Like I should not be reading something and every other line I'm just writing mood. <laughs> like that is not fucking normal. There is so much value in reading literature and especially classics and this is why I bang on about it all the time because you think you're so far removed from it but that's just not true. People don't actually change that much and so the fact that you can find this affinity with things that are written by people who've been dead for hundreds of years there is a level of comfort in it and that's why I'm, yeah, that is why I'm reading a journal of a plague year during our own fucking plague year. Because generally, there's never been a better time to read it. And had I read this, I've thought about reading this for ages. Had I read this even, had I read this two years ago, it wouldn't have meant anything to me because of the fact that I couldn't place any of it. Maybe if you want to feel a little bit better about our own fucking plague, read about theirs because at least there's not people going around with a bell going, bring out your dead. Um, but like, fuck. And as well, with the way that Defoe writes, he's just, he's just, cause he's like, you know, more of like a pamphleteer journalist kind of thing. Okay, take this for instance. When Calvino writes, um, he's telling you that he's grabbing your hand and bringing you into the book. He tells you, um, he's letting you know that that's what's going on. If you read someone such as Donna Tartt, that was much more like, let me take your hand and let's go on this adventure together. I mean, spoilers, there's a body in the first sentence. 
Um. But the way Defoe writes is he's almost like talking to you and without even realizing he's grabbed your arm and led you into the story and you're, you're there like, why am I 50 pages in? When did I start reading this? Because you're reading about these stats and you're like, blah, 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 and then you don't understand how you've suddenly been taken on this tour around London. And obviously it helps that I know London as well as I do. He's talking about like the city and about like some mine in the fields and stuff. If you don't know, that's where KCL is. So just even, I know the churches he's talking about. Um, and then, you know, you're, he's walking you down like Fleet Street or he's walking you down Drury Lane. And I'm like, I used to go this way when I went to the library. He's talking about like, um, Chancery Lane, that's where um, The Morn is, which is KCL's big library on the Strand. Like, it's just so nice to see London and be taken around it like that. But that that's the thing, like, that's what books can do for you with so much. I like fantasy and like world building is really nice, um, but I think almost my preference is with people who take that world building approach almost to the world that we do live in, and then that you get that experience, like, there's no level, like, the level of assumed knowledge, like, isn't there in that same way. And, like, Defoe kind of does that. And then Murakami does that. That's why I appreciate his writing so much. He does the magical realism stuff. So he has, a like, a predisposition to building things like that anyway. And then when you read his stuff that is set in, like, the real world, so to speak, you still get that sensation and that, like, feeling of being so in it. And that is why I like reading stuff, like, especially good shit, you know? We're just like, I want to be brought into this world and I want to be shown something that I might not ever experience. Like, there is a chance I may never go to Japan. That's totally like, you know, but I'll never experience Japan in the 1960s. I'll never experience London during a plague. <laughs> I was about to go, I'll never experience London during a plague, but that's just not fucking true, is it? Um, I'll never experience London in like, the 17th century like it can show it can show you the world um i just don't understand people who don't read and it's like it's great when you get to do it with movies of course it is it would be ludicrous for me especially to say otherwise but you can get so much inside someone's head and mum's right like it's so much about your capacity for empathy and I think it makes you just a more open-minded person that you understand that there are so many different ways of living a life. Just because it's not your way doesn't mean that it's the wrong way. I think a question like this is so like twofold. There's why I study literature in that formal capacity and then there's why you read. I feel like for me, there's always an informative and educational element in that. And like a personal growth self teaching kind of side to it as well, you know? I enjoyed studying in a formal capacity more than anything because it exposed me to so many different things. And again, more than, more than, more than anything, it taught me a skill set. You know, if you're studying a literature degree, it's not about the books that you study. It's about the way that you learn to interact with them. It's the way that you learn to be analytical, it's about the way that you learn to construct arguments, it's a way that you learn to write to an incredibly high quality standard and register. Like that is what you actually get from studying a literature degree. It's not it's not about the books. And so really like you don't need to study literature in a formal capacity to get this other side out of it. I'm grateful that I have this other side because I value it in terms of who I am as a person and also for any kind of like future career things it just helps to have an analytical mind and like a good style register and like I said with complet it shaped my worldview massively um and then that does have influences upon the other things that I've started doing like that is what a literature degree is actually teaching you and the worldview thing like I've already banged on about is so important to me and that's it was kind of already a worldview that I like had that like connectedness but I just think doing complet solidified it for me and helped me see it in like certain different ways and like helps me build it together better and now i guess it just massively spills over into like what i choose to read and stuff because in a way i am here out here doing this on my own right the the guiding hand has been taken away from me um which i think has been a good thing because i can read whatever and then to just what you actually get from like just reading different kinds of things especially my preference being fiction classics and philosophy it is about empathy and it is about understanding and it is about challenging and learning lots of new words. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm reading Butler's Gender Trouble. I managed to read a different book in the meantime from when I've started reading this and I started reading something else because 
Her text is dense, you guys. I'm learning an average of like one and a bit words on every new page because her work is dense and it gave me a headache. But I'm gonna, per I'm gonna persevere. Because um, like I've said in my other videos, I have too much pride to not finish a book, which is stupid and you shouldn't do what I do, but you know. I don't think anyone should ever get to a point where they don't wanna learn about how other people live their lives and have lived their lives. And when you just think that you don't have anything left to learn, I guess I just never wanna get stuck in my ways. And I would like to think if there was a revolution or a coup, people would be like, you're an intellectual, you're the first one to die. If books don't have power, why revolution burn book, yes? Hmm. Literature degrees are really not about the books. It is very much about teaching you a skill set. It is about teaching you an analytical skill set. It is about teaching you how you write essays, how you think, how you structure, how you argue, um, and maybe how you are open-minded and how you interact with like material, let's say, um, because obviously my annotating skills come very much from having an MO when looking at a book and being like, what am I looking for? I don't really have anything to look for now apart from just, yeah, I always highlight things that are to do with like shared experiences and are very much about that like, I hate the word, I hate this word so much, but we use it anyway. I hate the word universal, but it is also very much about looking through those little things that are about this like shared human experience, um, the human condition, shall we say. I'm interested in the human condition. Why do you think I love Montania as much as I do? Bay. And I think there is a lot of comfort that you can find in identifying people that are nothing like you, or at least that you would think nothing like you. Um, and why that bit in the Iliad where they're describing this woman who's walking with all of her like pots and stuff and the child is running after her crying because she just wants to be picked up and pulling at a skirt because she just wants to be picked up. Yeah, there's a reason that gets me. Um, <laughs> And there's a reason that you read Sappho and you read about like those deep feelings of like love and stuff and now you read it and you're like fuck, fuck, that doesn't change. That's why I love reading about the Greeks and thinking about like the different kinds of love, like your eros, storage, philia. I think it's just important to try and understand other people. And I think that's always been the case and that will always be the case. And I don't want to be like, oh, it's more important now than ever, because that's kind of a contrived statement, right? It's always been important. I think sometimes more than anything now, acknowledge and appreciate differences rather than feeling threatened by them. Especially because people always feel threatened by things that they don't know and that they don't understand. If you choose to educate yourself, if you choose to seek these things out that you think maybe you just don't know, the more familiar you are, the less scary these things become. I think it's especially valid thing to talk about during a pandemic because we haven't been able to go out and experience the world in other ways. But books will always be here for us. And that does go for films as well. What is it that you want to get out of a book when you read it? At heart, that is what it's about, right? I want to learn something. Whether that is something factual, whether that is like a skill, or whether it is just empathy. <laughs> That's what I want. If it's just entertaining, eh. Like it's nice, but ultimately, eh. That is admittedly how I felt about normal people. I identified with it, but like not enough for me to really care. That's why I, some of you know, I did not enjoy The Alchemist. I just didn't understand what you would learn from it. But that is coming from a point of view of somebody who has studied a lot of philosophy already. If this is like the first fable moral, philosophical thing you've ever experienced, maybe it can shift your attitudes and change your mind and stuff. Um, it didn't for me because I guess other authors just got to me first so I found it contrived. That's just me. It's not a criticism on you if you enjoyed it. But it is a sweet, sweet thing to be able to read whatever you want. But I guess I'm just refining at the moment what it is exactly that I want to achieve for all of this. I started reading this and I really thought it was going to be boring. Now it's hitting home in a way that I did not almost want it to. But again, here we are. And I think that takes us to the end of this video, actually. Why do you pick up a book? Why? Tell me. 
Tell me why, because there will literally be a thousand and one different takes on this, so I'm very curious to hear yours. If you have any book related content, yes I know, please feel free to suggest it down below. Your suggestions are always welcome. Like, subscribe and all that jazz. And I will see you all very, very soon. Bye. And the, and the way that I like to consume my, and the way that